Um, this week, I came across a new research paper. They are predicting that the population of Earth will start shrinking in just over 50 years. Whoa. So there have been lots of models in the past that have estimated, you know, like in 100 years, we'll be at like 12 billion, 14 billion. But this new paper, and of course, these estimates are changing over time. This is taking into a handful of new considerations. Like what? Yeah. Well, basically, so the population of the Earth right now is 7.8 billion. They believe their estimate was that by 2064, it will actually almost hit 10 billion. So we still have like another 2 billion in growth that's predicted to come. Okay. But beyond that, they think by... 2100 it will shrink to 8.8 billion due to climate change um no the main factors were them just like predicting like like so there's a lot of countries that are having i wouldn't yet call them crises but like obviously like the age demographics are changing so much so like japan as an example yeah, has an like aging an population. aging population canada they, has an aging population yes but japan is an example they think will go from 128 million to 60 million by 2100 wow so that's like half the population uh china they think may dip under a billion to 730 million by that same time wow um i'm just going to read a quote that they said though that was like an interesting perspective it said for high income countries with below replacement fertility rates the best solutions for sustaining current population levels mm -hmm. economic growth and geopolitical security are open immigration policies mm -hmm. and social policies supportive of families having their desired number of children However, a very real danger exists that in the face of declining population, some countries might consider policies that restrict access to reproductive health services with potentially devastating consequences. I mean, fascinating uh, quotes, fascinating information uh, where science, I think, becomes so important when we're speaking about, you know, sustaining life on this planet for many reasons. There's climate change. But I really do think that, uh, again, I've talked about this book a lot, but The Next Great Migration, all about immigration, and it is so integral to economies, and it's so integral to societies, and for some reason, there well, it's not some reason, it's racist uh, scientists and racist policies that have created this fear of immigration and of others, when really, it's actually very essential. To ha like This is a really interesting stat about how important it is to have allow immigration, especially during the climate crisis, when people, there are going to be climate refugees who will need to live somewhere. And that will be a net positive to your society. Because mm -hmm. for example, in the East coast of Canada, this is like an acute example, an aging population, they need immigrants to come and to take care of this aging population in hospitals, caregivers. They actually, it's, it's one of the reasons why Canada is open to immigration in many ways, because we actually need it without it. We don't have enough people to look after our society. And that's the same case for America. And so it's just sad sometimes when you see science get politicized to like create these policies that are economically bad and, and of course bad for the for many other reasons. I was going to say we're in a very peculiar age range for this because 50 years is when we are 80 and will potentially need to rely on, you know, services that help elderly people. But this will be the time when the age uh, demographics will be so skewed. There'll be so many more old people than young people. Then we'll the need work, immigration. The work, yeah, right? potentially the workforce will not be able to support the aging economy through taxes and stuff because it will be so much smaller so it is like we need to start thinking about these things now because the future of our lives will be greatly impacted if if we don't come up with solutions to that and the society like the fabric of our societies with with or without immigration like we have to rethink right now like the working population is like the largest and helps support the older older populations to have like services but why would you not say that it's with immigration sorry i'm just you saying with just... or without um I, I obviously believe that that and even in the study they're saying that it's like a huge factor but even talking about other issues that don't deal with that specifically i just mean like our whole societies will start to change because because fertility rates are changing so much, right? So mm -hmm. regardless of bringing people in, that is, I think, a major solution or something that needs to be, like, talked about and figured out. But it is, like, our, our societies are changing. What does that mean for every other aspect of how our society functions? So it's just interesting. The caveat to this is, like, they're, they're calling it the best model to date. These models do always change. And also, like, we're in a pandemic. Like, things can happen. Like, <laughs> people can like, die. People yeah. can, like, the population could change in either <sighs> direction. So it's really hard to say at the end of the day. But 